Hey, Daniel Bach here from JumpScience.com. This video is talking about acceleration. Uh, we need to cover this because I want to talk about sprinting research and a lot of the sprinting research uses data from acceleration. So we need to understand acceleration in order to interpret that data correctly. Alright, so for acceleration we are back to Newton's law. F equals MA, right? Force equals mass times acceleration. So we want horizontal acceleration okay therefore we need horizontal force right uh, more horizontal force equals more horizontal acceleration so during acceleration how do we get horizontal force well it's simple we just orient our body on an angle so that we have a horizontal force component uh, to our push in the ground right so if we're pushing uh, back on this angle that means the ground is going to push back opposite angle, right? Newton's other law, equal and opposite force. Okay, so we got return force from the ground on the same angle but the opposite direction. All right, now force vectors again. This force is going to have a vertical component, right? That's going to be your uh, perpendicular, your normal force pushing up from the ground. And then it's going to have a horizontal component and that's going to be from friction. Okay? So, this force right here, this friction, is what pushes you forward. So, if we want to accelerate faster, then we want to increase this force here. So, how do we do that? Uh, well, one, we just push more force into the ground, right? You push more force into the ground, the ground pushes more force back. That's going to increase your horizontal force component. You're going to get more acceleration. The other thing we can do is we can lower the angle, right? So if this was my angle and I get my acceleration angle down to that, that's going to give me a smaller vertical component and a larger horizontal component, right? And that would give me a greater horizontal acceleration. So when you're training your acceleration, one of the things you want to do is try to accelerate at a lower angle to get more horizontal force. However, we have to keep in mind something. Uh, that would be gravity, right? Our unrelenting enemy. So, you notice we got a larger horizontal force component here, but we got a smaller vertical component. Okay? Now, the tough part is we're relying on that vertical component to counteract gravity, right? So just like during top speed, we have a flight phase during acceleration. So we have these slight little vertical jumps during acceleration. Now they're even smaller here than during top speed, okay? But there is still a slight vertical jump. We have to overcome gravity on each stride. So as this angle gets lower, we lose vertical force, right? And if, if that vertical force gets too low, uh, you don't overcome gravity it's actually going to lower your center of mass and you're going to end up having to catch yourself and that's going to uh, slow you down a lot. Okay, So there is a limit to how low you can go. You can't just decide to go to a certain angle. It's dependent on force. So let's say this is your angle and this vertical component here is just enough to match gravity. So this is the lowest angle you can have then. Okay? Now if you want to get to here, this vertical component is not enough if this force is the same. However, if we make this force bigger, okay, say this force is now out to here, then we're gonna get a bigger vertical and bigger horizontal component, okay? So now maybe we can balance out gravity again because we made our force bigger, okay? So producing more force, pushing more force into the ground allows you to uh, have a lower acceleration angle, okay? So what you can't do is go look at Asafa Powell coming out of the blocks and say, oh, he's got such and such angle and say, oh, well, I'm gonna do that. No, you're not Asafa Powell. You don't have the force production to do that. Now, should you try to come out at a low angle? Yes, absolutely. But you can't expect yourself to just match an elite sprinter unless you have elite sprinter force. All right, so this is another example where your technique or a particular component of your technique, your angle, 
uh, is a product of your force. Now, speaking of skill, uh, we have not talked about breaking force, right? So producing more force is going to give you better acceleration uh, if you're pushing in the right direction. But if you're pushing yourself backwards a little bit on each stride and decelerating, then you might get greater force but not greater acceleration, okay? Because you're not pushing in the right direction. So uh, how do we avoid braking force during acceleration? It's very much like top speed, okay? We are trying to uh, generate backwards velocity of the foot and strike underneath the hips. So we're trying to drive the foot back like so, okay? Now, during acceleration, we're not moving with as much velocity, so we don't need as much backwards velocity of the foot. Um, and because of that, we don't need to use the same strategy. We don't need to um, cycle and snap it back, okay? That's a way to generate more velocity. Rather, we can just drive back into the ground during the early part of acceleration, okay? So rather than uh, your foot coming off the ground, cycling up and snapping back, we can do a lower heel recovery, right? Where your foot is gonna um, stay lower and then drive back. Okay, that would be its path relative to you, relative to your body. If we were looking at the path relative to the ground, we would hope that it would be lower and then just go straight down before it hits the ground, okay? Again, we're trying to prevent the foot from going forwards into the ground, because if it goes forwards into the ground, it's gonna push the ground forward, the ground is gonna push back, okay? So, it's the same concept though. We are uh, avoiding braking force by generating backwards velocity of the foot and getting it underneath the hip when you strike. That starts out by just driving the foot back. As you get faster and faster, it turns into more of a cycle. All right, now effective acceleration mechanics are easier to come by than effective top speed mechanics. Uh, remember during top speed, we have really short ground contact time and how fast you can get off the ground is going to uh, determine how good your mechanics can be. Okay, so you need uh, a lot of vertical force in a small amount of time and only elite sprinters are able to produce the kind of force that allows them to sprint with something close to ideal mechanics. But in acceleration, we have a longer contact time. This push into the ground is going to last a lot longer than during top speed. So uh, because of that, it doesn't necessarily take like a special athlete to have good acceleration mechanics. Okay, so you definitely do want to uh, put in the time to become a skillful accelerator. Right? This is something that uh, you don't have to be genetically gifted to accomplish. You can acquire this skill and it will make you a faster athlete. So altogether, if you become more powerful to improve the force that you push into the ground and you become uh, more skillful so that you can push that force in the right direction, you will improve your acceleration.